Hi, good morning. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and I'm Bruce Limecooler. Last week, we were talking about pocket watches, the timeless collectible. This week, our show is on how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer. We come to you every Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m. On, Con- on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and now on FM 103.7. We're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and iAntique.com, your home for antique and collectibles social networking. If you have any questions or comments before, during, or after the show, please feel free to go to iAntique.com and click on the Ask Bruce button. There you'll be able to send us your thoughts, questions, and photos that you would like to share. We're going to start off our our topic today on how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer by what to buy and what not to buy. And you need to remember that customers who want to shop from you uh, need three basic things. First of all, you need to know why they're shopping from you. There's three reasons that motivate people to shop, and that is they're either buying it for an investment, they're going to buy it to uh, resell it or to hope it increases in value in the future, Or they're going to buy it to use the item. And if they're buying it to use the item, then they're going to be putting it in their home or having it as a functional piece because quite often the items that were made in the past were were better quality and uh, lasted much longer and, and had a better appeal even. And then lastly, and the one I like the best, is the warm and fuzzy feeling. And that's when folks will buy something because of a bygone time and and they remember that it's um, something fond memory that came from their past. And so they've got to have it. So it's a good way for you as a dealer to be able to market from those three items. But you do need to give the customer what they want. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you the last one. The last one is that you need to make sure you have a variety of merchandise and a variety of pricing. So let's talk, get into what we're going to give the customer what they want. National, not the traditional antiques and collectible sales approach. It doesn't always have to be 100 years old to be in your spot at the antique and collectibles mall. There's a lot of uh, collectibles that go along with antiques, and they don't have to separate from the antiques. They can augment the antiques. So you need to remember that when you're setting them up. Uh, you need to give them the well-stocked booth filled with great values. That's the variety of merchandise and the variety of pricing. And you need to keep it well-stocked. That's You need to be able to work your space. And collectibles are a broad category. So remember that the all those different reasons that folks are buying the items is what you need to cater to when you're trying to uh, set up your booth space or when you're trying to buy merchandise to put for sale uh, there for the customer. And then we want you to remember that you need to change your booth with the seasons and the market. Changing your booth from the different seasons, and we actually have a whole uh, show coming up in the future on holiday-themed collectibles and how you can utilize those different colors and what's popular about each holiday. But today I just want to talk about changing with the seasons, the four seasons of the year, winter, spring, summer, and fall, that should be apparent in your uh, booth space when you're trying to get items out there available for sale to the customer. And you also need to know what's going on in the market. What's driving people? Is it a time of year when there's going to be a lot of weddings going on? Is it a time of year when there's going to be somebody <clears throat> who needs um, some event? Maybe there's a lot of home sales in the springtime or there's going to be setting up for family dinners because it's the winter time and they're going to be doing more stuff inside. We find that uh, furniture sells better in the fall and the winter than it does necessarily in the summer. In the summer, you might find that items that are smaller and maybe uh, more unique tend to sell more frequently in the summer. So, But remember, today is a trendy market, and they like what's happening now. Some of the things that a dealer can do to know more about what can be available to the uh, customer or what, what they can make available to the customer is to read magazines. There's a lot of magazines out there, and they do give you a lot of broad information. But mostly, you can just get them, pick them up and look at the pictures because the pictures tell you what people want to decorate with, what they want their homes or just individual rooms in their house to look like. And then I'd also like you to remember that today's TV shows 
A good example from a show in the past that had huge popularity with the antique and collectibles market was Martha Stewart. And when Martha Stewart used to set up a display in her show, it wasn't long after that show was over that folks would come in and say, hey, I got I saw this on Martha Stewart. I got to have that or I need to set that up within my house. There's also American Pickers, you know, a lot of people or, or uh, Antique Roadshow. You know, a lot of dealers said, well, you know, they just make it tougher for me because they tell everybody that it's worth this much so I can't buy any merchandise anymore. Actually, what they all did was revitalize the antique and collectibles industry. And a lot of folks were had a new interest. And after Martha Stewart waned away in the popularity, these other shows really needed to bring that back to us. And they did just that. But if you're just now joining us, we're talking about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer in today's market. And we're brought to you by Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. I'd like to remind you, though, if you're a dealer and you're setting up your booth, it's important that you specialize in the areas that you have knowledge in. Because in that area, you can always seek out the best piece and the most unique piece, and you can bring it and give it a light that the customer's really going to appreciate from you. And remember your inventory profit centers. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that you need to remember, like the staples, glass, unique smalls, home decor. Those things really bring into your booth a, uh, a flavor that, that tells the customer that you're there and that you take care of it. But as one of my dealers shared with me, it's very important to be true to yourself. Because if you don't like something then maybe that's not the way that you should have your booth set up or the items that you should sell in your booth. If they don't interest you, don't worry about it. You know, you need to be worried about buying well and selling well. So if you're buying something when you go to a show, if you know about it, buy something. You know, you need to remember that it's a business and you need to treat it like a business. And so when you're going out to the estate sales, the garage sales, and all those places out there, <clears throat> and you're buying your merchandise, you need to remember that you have the ability to trust yourself and pick the items that you like and, and set up your booth how you want it to be set up. Concentrate on what you know and what you understand. If it interests you, then do the research. A good example there would be dolls. And for me, dolls don't hold a real particular interest, but I have seen many dolls in showcases that sell for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So there is a real market for dolls. But if I was buying items to put into my booth space, I might uh, see dolls at a sale somewhere and they might be a good value. I probably wouldn't pay much for them, but I could turn around and sell them as a bargain or a quick return. So I always tell people, if it interests you, do the research. If it doesn't interest you, then buy it, turn it over for as inexpensively as you can, because once you do that, you just gave a bargain in your booth. And let me tell you, there's nothing that brings a customer back any quicker than finding a bargain in your booth. And as I, I haven't told you yet, but in our particular location, and we know it's true in virtually every antique and collectibles mall, out of every 100 people that have come through the door this month, 75 of them have been there within the last 30 days. So if your booth doesn't look like it's new and fresh and happening, then you don't have, they're just going to walk right on by. They're not going to give it a second glance. They're going to go, well, I didn't see anything in there last time. So it, it, they haven't been here. There's nothing new in there. And that's what they're going to say to themselves. So you need to make it look fresh and happening. You need to keep it looking good at all times. And if you offer a bargain in there, what's the big deal? There's no problem with that whatsoever. But if you have luck with certain items, I say get them, do them more, buy more of that particular item because not only are you gaining in your knowledge on that item, but you're also offering it up and you're building a customer base that wants to come there and find that item just from you. So sometimes it's the small things that you do that help. And then remember to move your booth around. Sometimes it takes no more than moving it from one side of your booth to the other, from the back to the front, or just totally mixing up the booth so that it looks entirely different. You can decorate with accent pieces, and there's so many different things that you can do that will make it look better and better. 
and then make a commitment to your education. Spend time talking about your interests. Uh, someone else might, you know, find something for you. If you're interested in something and you're telling other people, we call that networking, then they might be out there and they might find something that you're able to sell or that you know more about, and you might be able to get it at a value and be able to resell it for a profit. So it's always important to network. People will come to you for information if you know what you're talking about, and that's where you want to get to. So it's very important that you always remember the three main reasons why people want to shop in your booth or want to shop at an antique and collectibles mall. And that's the they they buy from you because of either the three reasons of the warm and fuzzy feeling or an investment or they want to use it in their home. And you, the other item that you need to remember is to have a variety of merchandise and a variety of pricing. And the last item is that you need to work your space. Well, you're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and our show today is on how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer. We are brought to you by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and iantique.com. That's I-A-N-T-I-Q-U-E dot com. You can also follow us on Facebook at Kansas City Brass Armadillo. Coming up at the store this July 9th, we will be hosting a free appraisal seminar. You can bring up to two items per person and have our knowledgeable dealers give you some insight on their value in today's antique and collectibles market. Next week's show will be on restaurant china and glassware used in restaurants. We'll dig even deeper to just what you can do to make a profit while selling what you love, antiques. We'll be right back. KCMO Talk Radio, where Kansas City connects with a Dave Ramsey show. First mistake people do is they don't go get a will. Then the second mistake is when they get a will, they keep everything secret. This reading of the will in the attorney's office and people are cut in or out of the will that were unexpected. You know why it's in the movies? It's good drama. Dave Ramsey, weekdays 9 to 11 a.m. on KCMO Talk Radio 710, now FM at 103.7. You're tuned in to KCMO Talk Radio 710 at 103.7 FM. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. Arrowhead Stadium, the home of your Kansas City Chiefs, is now open to you for tours. Come experience Arrowhead Stadium like you never have before with a behind-the-scenes tour. Walk on the playing field at Arrowhead, check out the Chiefs game day locker room, and learn about the history of the red and gold in the Hall of Honor, presented by Time Warner Cable. Arrowhead tours are available year-round and include self-guided tours, private group tours, and special game day tours. For more information and to book your tour, visit GoArrowhead.com or call 816-920-4833. You've tailgated in the parking lots, cheered from the stands in the sea of red. But have you ever been behind the scenes at Arrowhead? This is your chance to walk on the playing field at Arrowhead. Check out the Chiefs game day locker room and learn about the history of the red and gold. Arrowhead Stadium Tours are available now at GoArrowhead.com. One day, I'll teach chemistry to kids. I'm going to be an architect. My dream is to be a chef. This is a world of possibilities. A world in which people who put their minds to something can really make a difference. My goal is to help the environment. Someday, I'll find a cure for cancer. At the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, we believe that aspiring minds can achieve anything. So we dedicate ourselves to making sure everyone has an opportunity to go to college. Each year, we provide more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds, making higher education possible for anyone at any stage of life. 
I can go back to college. I can change careers. I can make a difference. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Today might be the day I drop out of school. Today could be the last day I try. My parents alone can't stop me. My friends can't even stop me. But you might be able to. With United Way, you could tutor me, be my mentor, or volunteer to just read with me. If someone had helped me earlier, I might not be struggling. And studies prove that kids who read well by third grade are more likely to graduate. There are tons of ways people like you can help kids like me stay in school. And United Way is calling for you to be one of them. Because it takes 12 years to create a graduate. It takes about the same time to create a dropout. And the difference between me becoming one or the other could be you. Make me a success, not a statistic. Take the pledge to volunteer now at unitedway.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Where Kansas City talks. Talk Radio 710. Now at 103.7 FM. Welcome back. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and I'm your host, Bruce Linecooler. Our show today is How to Be a Profitable Antique and Collectibles Dealer. We're sponsored by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. If you have any questions, go to iAntique.com and click on the Ask Bruce button. There you can give us your feedback and share your questions and comments. Coming up next week, we'll be doing a show on Restaurant China. Well, back into the being a profitable antique and collectibles dealer, I really think it's a topic that you need to examine yourself and you need to be interested in it and you need to be willing to commit. But then you need to also be prepared to take a chance from time to time. Trust your instincts. You know, if you like the item, then chances are somebody else is going to like that item. You know, and when you have that item in your hand and you're looking at it and how am I going to set it in my booth or what is it that I'm going to do to to display it or make it special, you need to ask yourself, what kind of appeal does it have? Does it appeal to others? Hmm. Well, then we would go back to the networking. If you were a picker for somebody, you might have already talked to other people who, you know, collect that item and you might have already had a sale that you can make without ever even having to put it in your booth. But if not. You need to decide what the best appeal is of that item. Is it the color that appeals? Is it the shape? And I think that it's important that you decide that when you're setting it up in your booth space as to how it can appeal to others. Then you need to ask yourself, I'm buying this item. Does it cross boundaries? Well, does that, I don't mean that it, it's not offensive, but does it have more than one market? Does it, is it sellable to more than one item? A good example of this would be um, Harley Davidson. Barbies. Who'd ever thought a man would want to run out and buy a Barbie doll? But that's very true that they do uh, see that as a as a true collectible. So it goes across more than one market. Uh, and then you need to ask yourself: Would you mind holding on to this item for a while? And if it's something that you're not investing a lot of money into, and you're buying it, and you think, well, maybe I could cross boundaries with it, or it has really good curb appeal. And, you know, I like the item, so I'm sure somebody else is going to like the item. Then feel free to go ahead and purchase that item and get it get it ready and into your booth. But keep your risk small. Start with small risk. Use it as a buying tool. You know, you got to ask what criteria it fits in. So how much money am I willing to invest into it? And if you're worried about keeping your investment small, when you're using it as a buying tool, feel free to tell the person you're purchasing it from, I can't afford to get into it for that because I have to hold on to it. I have to uh, pay rent and the facility that I'm in. I have to also clean that item up. I have to wait for the right kind of buyer. And along with that comes, you know, fees and everything that I have to pay. And so if you feel that it fits in all these criteria, then yes, go ahead and get it. It should probably be a good item for you. And then gradually keep your, uh, increase your risks. But keep it few and far between. Stick to the ones that you know are good resale items, good items that you can put out there and and they're going to sell. They're tried and true. Um, you know, some of the items we were discussed earlier, there's there's glassware, there's home decor. 
Um, wood items, you know, if you're getting them for the right, pri- right price point and you're able to turn them back around at a bargain to the customer, then you know you've got the correct kind of item. Well, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer in today's market. And we're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. If you have any questions or comments, please go to iAntique.com and click on the Ask Bruce button. Now, as we discussed earlier, being a picker is important. So when you're buying and you've been networking and you know what kind of things people are looking for, if you come across it, then that should be a no-brainer. But you should always always do your networking and talk to other people. If you and if you pay little for something and you're able to resell it for a just a small markup or even a good markup for you, but it's still a good price. Um, I have a dealer in my mall who does that frequently. He buys inexpensively and he sells inexpensively. And his booth, he fills it up, and before you know it, it's empty. Every dealer in the mall buys from that dealer. Every dealer in the mall waits till he comes in and stocks his booth, and then they go back to that booth and they shop from it because they know they can get a good deal for something that they can resell. So he's selling to the customer as well as to the other dealers. And then you need to think about finding other markets. How can I sell this item? Is it a good eBay item? That's a good example. You know, we, we've talked about eBay before, and eBay – in its beginning onset, it was really scary to a lot of antique and collectible malls because they figured everybody was just going to quit being a dealer and they were going to um, set up and just sell on eBay. And some people tried that, but it didn't always work out. What they, what they found out was it just made the pie bigger because now you were selling to the whole world instead of just to your community. We were also able to find out that eBay was um, a tool that we could get information from, that we could use to better sell our merchandise, that we could use to set up and get a description or the history of an item and perhaps sell the sizzle with the steak and make it even more attractive to our customers. Don't be afraid to make a decent profit. You're conducting a business, not a charity. You know, that's something you need to remember. This is a business. Sometimes the no answer is the best. You just need to come back. Um, Because I have had it happen where a customer comes in and they just want to uh, offer a lowest price that they can and think, well, you know, I'll come back and do it again. And sometimes as a dealer, when we give you a call and say, hey, you, you got this offer on this item. If you say no, I've seen them buy it or counter with a price that's a little bit of a deal. So you, because you need to assume that It's going to be sold at some kind of a deal because you wanted a deal when you bought it and they wanted a deal when they're going to buy it from you. So you just need to be prepared for that. And you can use that as your buying tool. Um, Is it a unique item? If it's a unique item, a good example of this is a a, we had a Kentucky Derby glass that for two years, the same customer came back and made an offer on it. The dealer said no. After the second year, they came back and they said no. The third year course it was a big triple crown this year and they were expecting big things people came back and they they were prepared to buy it and pay full price for it well when we return we would like to tell tell you about the brass armadillo antique mall hosting their bi-monthly free appraisal seminar coming up on saturday july 19th it starts at 11 a.m on a first come first serve basis after the break we'll talk more about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer We are brought to you by the Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. Remember that it doesn't make any difference what you collect or what aspect of the antique and collectibles business you are in. You'll learn something here today and every Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m. We would love to invite you to stop by the store located just off of I-70 between exits 21 and 24. I would love to see you there. If you're thinking about antiques as a business, the Brass Armadillo is the perfect outlet. And we would love to make you a part of our family. New dealers are like oxygen. They breathe life into the industry. There is still plenty of treasures out there. Could you be the one that finds that next hot item? Are you starting your day with the KCMO Morning Show and Greg Knapp? Let me tell you some of the things I'm for. I'm for peace on the plaza. 
I'm for a zoo you can go to without getting shot at. There's a lot of things I'm for, Mayor Sly James. What I'm not for is you trying to tell me the only way Kansas City can be a big-time city is if we're forced to put in a streetcar that we don't want. Greg Knapp, mornings 5 till 9 on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Call or click before you dig. Dig safely. It's wrong. Avoid the danger. Avoid injury. It's important to know what's underground before you dig. No matter how small the job, if you're digging in your yard, call or click before you dig. Call 1 800 Dig Right or 811 or click on mo1call.com. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Israel continuing its assault in Gaza against Hamas with more bombings overnight. The death toll here in Gaza is now 121 with over 900 wounded. Many are civilians. Militants have now fired over 700 rockets from here since Monday. And the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the air campaign is being stepped up until the rockets stop. Fox Radio's Emily Wither in Gaza. Ronald Lee Haskell accused of killing a family of six near Houston, falling twice during his first court appearance. He had to be wheeled out of the courtroom and was treated medically back at the jail, his victims were related to Haskell's ex-wife, and investigators think he went to the home looking for her. Fox Radio's Evan Brown. Actor-comedian Tracy Morgan is suing Walmart over last month's crash that seriously injured him and killed comic James McNair. The suit claims Walmart was negligent when a driver of one of its trucks rammed into Morgan's limousine van. Fox News, we report, you decide. The summer heat continues today with mostly sunny skies. Temperatures will climb to the mid-90s, feeling closer to about 100 degrees when you factor in that humidity. Winds will be gusty out of the southwest, 15 to 25 miles per hour with higher gusts possible. For tonight, our rain chances increase after midnight as skies become partly cloudy. Temperatures overnight will fall into the mid-70s by your Sunday morning. I'm KCTV5 meteorologist Haley Shulman. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass Armadillo. Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we know. We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. Celebrate giving. Celebrate hope. By making a donation to City Union Mission, you'll help feed Kansas City's hungry or help a homeless person learn how to put their life back on track. Join us as we encourage Kansas City to celebrate hope with City Union Mission. Visit our website to find out more. This is not just our city and our mission. It's your city and your mission. Call 816-470-0040 or visit DonateKC.com today. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass 
Morris Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we know. We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. KCMO Kansas City, Talk Radio 710, and now on FM at 103.7, making it even easier to hear your personalities. This is KCMO. Welcome back. You're listening to iAntique with Bruce, and the title of our show today is How to Be a Profitable Antique and Collectibles Dealer. Next week, we'll be hosting a show on Restaurant China and the glassware used in restaurants. We are coming to you every Saturday from 6 to 7 a.m. on KCMO, Talk Radio 710, and FM 103.7. We're brought to you by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and our sister networking site of iAntique.com, your home for antique and collectibles, social networking. If you have any questions or comments before, during, or after the show, please feel free to go to iAntique.com and click on the Ask Bruce button. There you can send us your questions or comments. Well, let's get back into some of the things you need to consider when you're uh, pricing your merchandise. Condition is everything. The, what the item is, the condition it's in, is there any damage? Is there any chips? Is there any cracks? And you can use that as a buying tool as well as a selling tool. But the most important thing to remember is always be honest. If you're going to put an item in your booth that has damage to it, then you need to put an as-is on it because you don't want to be known as a, a booth that or a dealer from a booth that took advantage of somebody. You know, and if an item is has any damage, you know, just remember that you can still sell it. But when you're buying it, it's kind of more, if it has any chips or cracks, a true collector, it can devalue it 50 to 90%. So that's what you're going to have to be able to sell it at. So you're going to have to buy it for a very reasonable price. Now, if it's a standalone piece, like a really unique uh, piece of pottery, like a Roseville pottery, it can stand a chip, but it's still not going to have the same value. So it can still be a good piece because a lot of people will buy it as a shelf setter, as a piece for decor in their home, just because they like the look of it. If an, if an item is mint, though, you need to make sure you make that your grand selling point because mint or near mint isn't only for coins or collectibles like that. If an item has no damage or flaws, and I'm, not, I'm talking about even no factory second issues, then it's a mint piece. And if it's paper, mint is, is critical, and it's also a very good selling tool. But if it's a... Uh, porcelain piece or a wood piece that's in mint condition or what we call room weddy for furniture, then that is the kind of thing that you should really uh, signify to the customer as a good way to, um, as a good item that they should own. You know, we call some of that selling the sizzle with the steak because you're going to point out to them all the benefits of that item. Then you need to identify uh, all of the interested buyers. Remember, each object has more than one buyer. So is it an item that is seasonal? Then I need to maybe have it in here at a different season. If it's an item that um, has a buyer all times throughout the year, then I need to feature it and put it out there and sell it sell it right now Be, oh, and then get more of them if I can. On a scale of one to five, what exactly do I have? You know, how unique is it? Is it going to be a quick turnaround item? Or do I want to pay a little more for this piece and make it an anchor piece in my booth just because it's cool. And so you can afford to do that on an occasional piece or two. And I, I tell dealers all the time, you know, don't buy furniture to put in your booth just to put for display only on it. Because as soon as you put for display only on it, quite often it's not going to sell right away and or at all. You know, you will get people who ask about it, but you don't want to sell it. So I want you to remember that it's important to have everything for sale. And so what? Price that anchor piece a little bit higher. And then once you've priced it a little higher, if somebody comes along and buys it, so be it. You have the money now where you can go buy a different piece. Not only does your booth look different, but you get to feature a new anchor piece. 
Well, if you're just now joining us, we're talking about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer in today's market, and we're brought to you by the Barass Armadillo and iAntique.com. So let's take a moment and talk about top dollar versus quick return. Should you expect to be able to get a high price in a mall environment? Hmm, well, that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, should this item be moved to a different venue? As we talked about before, eBay may be a better venue for a small, really unique piece. I've even had dealers who've connected with and taken things and sold them at Sotheby's because it's such a unique piece, such a great find that they know they need to get it out there in front of the customer base that has the bigger dollars. But if it's an item that uh, doesn't really have a different venue, if it's just more of a common item, but maybe it's really unique, I might want to put it in my mall as either a uh, focus point or I might want to put it in there as a good value because I didn't pay much for it. And then it's going to bring people back to my booth again and again. And, you know, that goes into, does it add that curb appeal to your booth? Are you willing to hold on to it? The key is keep turning my merchandise over. Keep your money rolling. If it interests you, then research the item. You heard me say that before, but it's so true. If it doesn't interest you, roll it right on out the door. Because if you do that, then you're going to be able to have customers who return to you again and again because they got a good deal in your booth. You know, me personally, I'd rather have the first $20 out of an object than the last. Because when you wait until the last $20 out of an object, you find out that you may be held on to it for months and months and maybe longer. Well, during that time, you didn't get to use that space to sell something else. And because you didn't get to use that space to sell something else, you're paying rent for a smaller space to display your merchandise. So I would much rather have the first $20 than the last $20. I'd much rather turn it over quickly, work on the volume. I, you know, I've had people before who've told me, you know, I buy only the top quality stuff and I don't care how long it takes before it sells. If that's your philosophy, it's, it's an okay, good philosophy, but you do need to be prepared that you're going to have expenses that go along with that. You know, it's rent or in some cases it might become storage, but, you know, you're holding on to it and it is going to cost you to do so. You know, and when you're buying an item, simply use that as your buying to, tool. Tell them you can't afford to get into it for that. You know, I need to buy, you know, buy what you know. And deals are okay. You're not taking advantage of somebody just because you know it's an item that has value. And you freely tell them, I cannot afford to get into it for that amount of money. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have to pay less for it or I'm going to have to pass on purchasing it. And then one thing you need to remember, too, is replace sold items. Never empty a booth for shows. You could run into more than one problem with that because many malls have contracts that discourage that behavior. But the biggest problem you're going to run into by doing that is you're going to let your customers think you've just moved out or that you can't get enough merchandise. Now, the dealer who sells at such a great value, who he fills his booth and it empties and he fills his booth and it empties... That's a different story because he has such a repeat customer base that come back there because of all the great values that they get to find within that booth. And so, you you know, you need to take full advantage of how that works out for you. Well, I want you to remember that I've really enjoyed talking to you so far. So uh, here is what we can do for you. If you love antiques and you love to look for antiques, put that together and you have the start of a fun and exciting business. The Brass Armadillo can help with just that. We'll be able to take care of all the business details, and all you have to do is to stop in and select your booth or showcase to get started. We make it very simple. You can start a business for less than $100 per month. When we return, we'll hear more about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and I'm Bruce. We are brought to you by the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and iAntique.com. If you want to send us any questions, please go to iAntique.com and click on the Ask Bruce button. And when we come back, we'll be talking about rest. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about restaurant wear and glassware from restaurants. KCMO Talk Radio is Mark Levin. So now, if you're male and you're white and you're a senior citizen, there's something wrong with you. There's so you're, you're, I mean, what is this? You should be arguing, demanding. Fighting for the institution of those principles, those conservative principles that promote individual liberty, that promote wealth creation, 
that promote jobs and opportunity. Weekdays 5 to 8 on KCMO Talk Radio 710 and 103.7 FM. Attention antique shoppers, if you're looking for the ultimate antique adventure, you will find it at the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70, between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We are the perfect place to stroll aisle after aisle of fine antiques and collectibles. Whether it's our fine antiques, vintage, or retro items, we have them all. Antiques are what we know at the Brass Armadillo. With hundreds of antique dealers and millions of items, it is a shopper's paradise. So come on out to the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall, just off I-70 between exits 21 and 24 in Grain Valley. We're open 9 to 9 every day. Come see what everybody's talking about. That's the word. We got everybody talking. Antiques are all we We got everybody talking. Everybody's talking about the Brass Armadillo. Brass Armadillo. Everybody's talking. There are a lot of kids in this country who didn't have a parent at their baseball games or recitals because their parents were serving in faraway places. But now their parents are coming home from battle, some with wounds you can see and some with wounds you can't see, like post-traumatic stress disorder. Every day, Wounded Warrior Project assists wounded warriors and their families with the Warriors to Work program, a program that helps warriors translate their military experience to civilian job experience and they help employers find the right warrior for the right job. My mom used to be a tank programmer. Now she works with computers. I'm really glad she's home because I can't eat my dad's marshmallow macaroni anymore. I was two when my dad went away to war. He was there for three of my birthdays. Now he's home and he's a logistics specialist. If you're looking for proven professionals, contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home the brave. The service experts at your Ford dealer know you'll likely be hitting the road this summer. So get the works. It's a synthetic blend oil change, tire rotation, brake inspection, and more. Designed to keep your Ford running right. Right now, get the works for $39.95 or less minus a $10 mail-in rebate, making it just $29.95. Only at your Ford dealer. Up to five quarts oil, taxes, diesel, and disposal fees extra. Rebate by prepaid debit card. See participating Ford dealer for rebate details through 831.14. And now, another golf confessional brought to you by Golfsmith. To avoid spending the day on the lake, a man told his family it was infested with sharks so he could go to hot deals of summer at Golfsmith, where you'll find the lowest prices of any golf store guaranteed. And it's on dry land. During hot deals of summer, get a set of Nike VRS Covert 2.0 irons and get a Nike VRS Covert 2.0 driver absolutely free. Only at Golfsmith. Anything for golf. Hey, America, we are your pets, and this song's dedicated to those people who don't have health insurance yet. In Roll, we say, we want you to be okay. In Roll, we say, take care, people, for goodness sake. There's a plan for every budget, so don't accept defeat. Now you can get covered and still... Buy me treats. Enroll! So listen to me, a talking pug, you see. If you get health insurance, preventive care is now free. So sweet. You take care of your pets. Now it's their turn to take care of you. Visit GetCoveredAmerica.org to learn about your health insurance options. That's GetCoveredAmerica.org. And take care, people! Brought to you by Get Covered America and the Ad Council. Coming up Friday on the show, St. Louis and Kansas City on a bad list. We'll tell you what it is and how it's going to impact your wallet. That and our money man, Chris Butler, on the KCMO Morning Show. Welcome back. We've been talking about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer. Coming up next week, we'll be discussing restaurant china and glassware used in the restaurant setting. You're listening to I Antique with Bruce, and I'm Bruce. Don't forget, you can send us your questions, comments, or photos at iantique.com. Once there, just click on the Ask Bruce icon at the top. We'd love to get your feedback or questions. You can also follow us on Facebook at Kansas City Brass Armadillo. 
I would also love to have you come by the store located in Grain Valley, Missouri. We're open 9 to 9, 7 days a week, 364 days a year. Come see what you can find. Okay, now let's get back into some of the things that you need to consider when you're being a dealer. And let's jump into traffic patterns. Merchandise considerations is important, but you need to understand how the traffic is going to go by your booth. Uh, And your first impression is very important. But I know somebody one time who told me that uh, the first impression is important, but being out there in the public eye, that's even more important. And they called that FaceTime. So when I'm sharing with a dealer about walking around and seeing the way the customers flow through the mall, uh, I'm asking them to watch which direction they go and what makes them stop. So I call that FaceTime. How much time does your booth have to grab their attention? So if you know which way they're coming from, then you know which way they're looking, then you know that this particular area of your booth has to have the best appearance. And it's usually either one wall or the other, and it needs to have a great appearance so that the customer's attention is drawn immediately to it. You're basically in competition with the booths right around you. And when you're offering great values, you're buying your merchandise well, and you're setting up your booth great, and you have eye-catching displays, then you can easily be the winner. But if you get into a competition with all your other dealers in that row, then a whole row can become more and more successful in an antique mall setting. What does your booth say about you as a dealer? Does it say, hey, I don't really care? You know, the dump and run booth setup method is not the best way to do things. And I have uh, talked to dealers before that want to know why I'm not selling like I used to or I'm not selling uh, as as making as much of a profit as I once was. And I I usually go back and take a look at their booth, and I find out that they're either using the dump and run method, which is where they just come in, unload the stuff, set it wherever, and leave, or they're not bringing enough merchandise into the mall in the first place. And you don't, you know, when you're buying merchandise, you got to have a good quantity of backup. And remember, you don't make your money when you sell it. You're making your money when you buy it. So you should be able to build an inventory so that you can have a, a merchandise available at all times. Um, you know, you need to have a flow to your booth. If you have a, a blocked area or an area that's hard to get into, customers will just walk right on by it. And that's especially true for older customers or young ladies who carry purses, uh, things like that. If you have a real narrow walkway or passageway, it's very difficult for them to get into your booth. So if your booth does not have a flow to it, then there's no way that they're going to be a very long-term shopper in your booth. You know, they're going to either get in it and get right back out, or they're going to bypass it altogether. Um, And I've talked to dealers before about putting stuff up too high. If you put stuff way too high in your booth so that it kind of feels like it could fall in on them, then customers are going to be in a hurry to leave the booth, and they're not going to spend time standing there and shopping. So the other thing you need to remember is when they're walking by the front of your booth, you need to have good visibility. So you don't put a real tall shelf in the very front and hide everything back behind it because that makes two problems in particular. One, you're creating an area where somebody could do something dishonest, even though we would hope they wouldn't, but you're creating a hiding area where they could do something dishonest. And also you're not letting them see what everything is that you have available for sale. So if you keep your front area low on your booth and you build it up what I call like a wave motion and you build it up towards the back and you have a flow through your booth, then you have all the tools that you really need to be able to set up and sell to the customers and and keep them in your booth for a while. You know, making your booth feel like home, and I've seen vignettes where folks have set up vignettes and made it – where it's it looks like somebody's living room or it looks like somebody's bedroom and they're selling the romance with the bedroom they're they're really making that an idea that the customer can can enjoy and put in their own home but if you're just now joining us we're talking about how to be a profitable antique and collectibles dealer in today's market brought to you by Brass Armadillo and iantique.com if you have any questions or comments please go to iantique.com and click on the ask bruce button So let's talk a little bit about display methodology a little more. You know, you want to avoid the stuff, the booth syndrome or stuff, the telephone booth syndrome, you know, the low in the front, the, you know, no dead ends, 
too much stuff, that's not good. But what was some more things that you can do with those key pieces? You need to highlight those key pieces. As I told you before, anchor pieces are pieces that you maybe spend a little more for. Maybe you really don't want to sell them, but you, you will, and you put a little higher price on those. And with those pieces, they can use to be used to draw a lot of attention to your booth. And you can even use them to set a theme. Some of them that I've seen is perhaps a bedroom or a bed or a kitchen setup, a kitchen vignette, where they set it up at just like a kitchen and they have a table and maybe an old stove. And on those unique pieces, they price them a little higher. But that's okay. But that's going to draw the people in and it's going to help them to want to stay in your booth for just a little bit longer. And then you need to elevate those items, if at all possible, and lots of light. Put light around them. When you do those kinds of things, it really catches attention. We had a dealer who set up with a a full size, well, a life size, it was a six foot tall transformer that was made out of steel work. And I can't tell you the number of comments that I got from customers and other dealers about how unique and cool that, that item really was. And then remember, color collectible themes. Um, pictures are great. Your booth can be have lots of pictures in it, but if you put too many, you're really eating up your wall space and you're going to make it more difficult for being able to have a good variety of merchandise to sell. And then you need to try to appeal to all people. Variety of merchandise, the variety of pricing. If you're not appealing to everybody, uh, you're just throwing half your customers away or more. And as I told you, out of every 100 people who come through the door, 75 of them have been there within the last 30 days. So you're going to ask yourself, do I want to appeal to only 25 of these customers or do I want to appeal to all 100? So you you have to ask yourself that question and set yourself up for success and, and be able to have the merchandise and have everybody be happy. You don't want mom looking at something and she's like, hmm, I think I could like this. It'll look nice in my home. And then all of a sudden, dad's going, uh, there's nothing in here that interests me. I think let's, let's move on. You know, let's move on. Let's go somewhere else in the mall. And so I tell dealers all the time, it's so important that you put your best foot forward at all times. Remember the three things we went over in the very beginning. There's one three-part rule, the three reasons why people buy. They buy because of a warm and fuzzy feeling, which is my favorite. They're buying for an investment or they're buying to use that item. So when you give them an item that tells them how they can use it, they're more likely to buy it to use it. Then the second thing is you need to offer a variety of merchandise at a variety of prices. And lastly, you have to work that space. If you don't work that space, if you don't keep it fresh and new and happening, then you're the one who's going to fall apart and you're the one who's not going to have the repeat customers and the sales that you would like to, to get to. I really want to tell you this is a topic that's so broad and so vast, and I've tried to broad brush everything in this one hour, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions that any of you might ever have. Just feel free to stop by the store. Next week's show is Restaurant China Glassware Used in the Restaurant Setting. You'll be listening, you are listening to I Antique with Bruce, and we're sponsored by Brass Armadillo and iAntique.com. Remember that it doesn't make any difference what you collect or what aspect of the antique and collectible business you're in. You will learn something here today and every Saturday at 6 a.m., and we air till 7 a.m. We would love to invite you to stop by our store located just off of I-70 between exits 21 and 24. I would love to see you there, and if you're thinking about antiques as a business, the Brass Armadillo is the perfect outlet, and I, for one, would love to make you a part of our family. New dealers are like oxygen, They breathe life into the industry. There is still plenty of treasures out there. Could you be the one that finds that next hot item? Take a retro road trip to the Brass Armadillo Antique Mall and join us for a vintage adventure.